Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. And top of the evening, everybody, and welcome to Sports Final, your kickoff into the sports weekend. And appropriately enough, we have a little off-season basketball and football to entertain you with tonight, including the story of a Tri-State football export who came home this evening as arguably the most accomplished high school coach in the entire state of Missouri. But we begin tonight with the latest and unfortunately the last update on Quincy native Luke Guthrie's progress in his first major championship in Pennsylvania. Luke had 30 holes to play today because of yesterday's weather conditions. The first oh, 11 of them, 12 of them didn't go badly as Luke was nicely positioned. His last 18, however, not very good as Luke fires a 79 over the course of that. That's nine over par gets him to 12 over for the tournament. The cut line was at eight over. Luke is going to have to sit out the weekend in what has turned out to be a very, very difficult golf course. But again, very proud of Luke making hay and making his first major championship has another shot in a month when he goes over across the pond to play in the British Open. We had some football tonight, little team camp, Quincy University sponsoring four teams at Hannibal High School, including the Hannibal Pirates, who don't lack for running backs, including the thousand yard rusher from last season, Mitch Nichols. What they do need is a quarterback, Elijah Harrison, outstanding wide receiver there, playing quarterback tonight. Nice pass completion for him. Whoever wins the quarterback position for the Pirates going to be able to throw to this guy. Very impressive looking tall wide receiver, Dalton Overstreet, with a touchdown catch here against Palmyra. For the most part, Palmyra's best efforts tonight came on defense, and that means the outstanding middle linebacker Ben Altoff leading the charge in this one as well. Plenty of good highlights out there and plenty more football to talk about in the coming days, including tomorrow on overtime. Now, foremost among the teams who trekked to America's hometown tonight was rising Kansas City powerhouse Staley High School, a program now skippered by a familiar face in these parts. Now, my current players don't know this, but my former players say I'm a heck of a lot more mellow than I used to be. <laughs> I'm a kinder, gentler person than my Palmyra days, but I'm not sure if that's the case entirely. Four plays into tonight's football festivities, the vintage Fred Bouchard resurfaced in Hannibal, as fiery and fired up as he ever was during his Palmyra days. The only real difference you'll find in Coach Bouchard these days is his resume, which includes five state championships, including one in 2011 at his current school, Staley, earned just three years into the school's existence. You know what, I, I probably will be able to enjoy it a lot more upon further review and reflection in five, ten years after I step away from it. But, you know, when you're in the middle of it, you're just pushing and pushing. You know, we're proud of the work that we've done, and we've got some great players. They had great programs at Oak Park High School, and, and in Oak Park split off, and, and we've got half those kids. It's not like they weren't playing high-level football already. We really just benefited from some good work that a number of people had done before then. And again, that's textbook Fred Bouchard, quick as always to defer any personal praise. But speaking candidly, it might be the one and only blemish on Fred's coaching resume that has driven him to the soaring heights he's achieved atop Missouri high school football. You know what, my years at Culver, I, I wouldn't trade those. I mean, we wish we would have won a lot more games. It's my own modern, and we, we certainly, but I really, again, the relationships of some of those people, some of those coaches there, Kevin Miles, again, was on that staff, but getting to know Mark uh, St. Clair and recruiting some of his players, that was really, uh, it was, it was such a valuable learning experience, and the truth is, is we don't win at the level we've been able to win at without that experience. I've just learned an awful lot about coaching and a lot about myself, and you know, I, I just take a lot of even fond memories from that, despite not getting enough wins on the field there. Clearly, he's carved out a Hall of Fame career for himself and a great niche for his family at Staley. Still, there's a part of Fred Bouchard that will always miss being the most vilified man in Monroe City. The, those those Monroe City games, we played eight times in four years, week six, quarterfinals, and you know those the crowds just absolutely surrounding the field the way they did. You know the uh, the Watson brothers hanging me in effigy as I'd walk on the field and yell at me, Paterno with a, a little guy in a suit dressed up on a on a string. It, those were fond fond memories. The funny part is that uh, I have one of their relatives on our football team here at, at Staley. Our starting left tackle is a uh, is uh, his last name's Watson. So anyway, we we really those Monroe City games. And the intensity of those, and it just kind of bringing a community together with one common theme, beat Monroe City, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Surely he's not talking about Principal Watson at Monroe City. 
Nah, couldn't be the same guy. Let's do some hoops today. QU Summer Camp, Quincy Notre Dame taking on Calhoun. Riley Walls right here with a nice feed from Drew Eaton. Nice bucket for him. Great passing here. Mr. Eaton to Tony Stella. Over to the cutting, Mr. Walls, who finishes strong there. And then more from QD. &E. Brian Copley with the spin and the connection here. Raiders looked pretty darn good today in dispatching with Calhoun. Keokuk, meanwhile, taking on West Prairie Johnny Dahl. Oh, it's good to see him back playing assist man right here. He can do it all. The big point guard looking to Brant Ames, who comes up strong. The up and under move, and it is required. At other end, Ethan Peterson, maybe the best wide receiver in all the Tri-States. Not a bad basketball player either, as he gets the two right here off the low post spin. Great slashing footwork here by Johnny Dahl. He's going to be as good as anyone. A surefire player of the year candidate as he gets the take right there. Adam Kearns working hard at the other end as well. Look at that spin move, and... It's true at the other end. Johnny Dahl, though, just doing what he does, his thing, breaking it down off the dribble. Oh, that's a C.J. McCollum teardrop move right there. Good stuff for him, knocking the floater and the and one at the other end of it. More for you now. Liberty and Mount Pleasant going at it. A little Austin Mast action right here as he just keeps hitting the boards and going to work. That is blue-collar effort, my friends, from Austin Mast. How about some more from the Mass? This time it's Michael Mass working hard. The bucket, the band aid, and the three point play for him. More this time is Andy Barry's going to come wide open and bury the shot for a three. Liberty looking very sharp. Andy Douglas's team doing some work in this one. We'll leave you with Knox County taking on Sterling Newman Catholic. Noah Williams going to just kind of work his way around the defense and for the easy bucket right there. More to come in this one from the outside. Joey McCauley. This kid's got some range on his jumper, and he's going to show it right here as he flushes that through. And then it's Royce Poor, the star of Knox County, playing Dishman to uh, Joe Engelbrecht right there for the finish. All kinds of good stuff and more highlights coming up from QU, including a biggie tomorrow between Palmyra and Payson right here on the Big Overtime Show. Baseball scores to pass along. I'll tell you what, Central Lee has caught fire. Keaton Benner among the many good hitters tonight for the Hawks as Mr. Benner had three RBIs. Central Lee buries New London 16-1. to The news not quite as good for the Quincy Gems as they struggle and struggle badly on the road at Danville. 11-2 to as the win streak comes to an end. Jake Ivory with one of the just two RBIs on the night for the Quincy